What we're going to be going over here is fixed overhead variance analysis. I'm going to be looking at it in terms of standard costing. And we're going to be laying out these variances here on our graph to understand where the, what the variances are and how they relate to each other. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, standard costing and variance analysis, this is where we're, where we're looking at our actual results or our actual cost here for the period and comparing it to our standard cost or a predetermined uh, cost that we'd have here. In this case, we're looking at our fixed overhead here. Okay, so when we're talking about our variance analysis, really we've got three different amounts that we have to be uh, looking at here. We're gonna have our standard cost here we're going to have to determine what our standard cost is. And then uh, for our period results or for what we're looking at for the period here, we have to know what our actual cost is. And then knowing what our actual cost and the standard cost that we have established here, we can determine the flexible amount here. And then based on our uh, different amounts here, actual versus flexible, flexible versus standard, we can determine our variances. Okay, so let's first start with our standard cost here. And really that's taking some standard quantity times some standard price. And in this case, we're working with a fixed overhead here. So we're gonna be looking at, you can look at it in terms of a unit basis. You're gonna to have to have some a standard quantity here, certain, and we're gonna be looking at it in terms of direct labor here. We're gonna base our allocation basis for our fixed overhead in terms of uh, direct labor. So we're gonna have some standard quantity here of direct labor that we have established times some standard price or a unit price here that we have to determine for our fixed overhead. Overhead. Okay, so that's for our standard cost. Now, uh, for our actual results here that we have for the period, that's where you're going to take your actual quantity here, in this case of a fixed overhead, times the actual price, the unit price here for a fixed overhead. And based on an hourly basis, we're going to look at. Okay, so now we know our actual results here for the period, and we know our standard amount or our standard cost. Now we can determine our flexible budgeted amount here. And really that's just taking our actual quantity that we've used here versus for based off our actual results and taking that actual quantity times the standard price here that we've established from our standard cost. So our actual quantity times our standard price that equals our flexible budgeted amount. Okay, so let's go down here and we'll look at it in, in terms of a table here where we're gonna calculate these uh, different variances here. So for our fixed overhead variance here, we're gonna have three different variances that we're gonna be looking at. We're gonna have a spending variance, a production volume variance, and an idle capacity variance. Okay, so let's start with our spending variance here. And really that's look, taking, looking at the difference between our actual amount here for the period versus what we have determined for our flexible budgeted amount. Okay, so look, I've got everything color coded here. So based on our fixed overhead, these actual flexible and standard amount, it's just taking some, in this case, actual uh, or some hours that we've used here in terms of direct labor times some fixed overhead right here. So let's look at our actual amount. This is just taking the actual hours that we've used here for the period and is basing it on direct labor hours here times the actual fixed overhead right here. So that would be the actual amount. And then for our flexible amount, that's taking the denominator hours times some standard fixed rate here that we've established. And what we mean by the denominator hours, when we're uh, determining our fixed overhead here, those are the total direct labor hours that we have for based on for our fixed overhead, basing our fixed overhead rate on these total direct labor hours we have for the period. So that's our flexible amount. Okay, so our spending variance, there's really nothing, we, no common term between our flexible and actual amount, so we just look at the difference here. So we take our actual amount that we have here, actual results, that would be the actual hours used times our actual fixed overhead rate and compare it to the flexible amount, which is just taking our standard fixed rate here that we've established times those total direct labor denominator hours here. So that difference would be our spending variance. Now our production volume variance, that's the difference between our flexible and our standard amount here. And you can see here, we have a common factor between the two here, that our standard fixed rate here. So we can factor that out. And then a variance is just the difference between those total denominator hours and the standard hours allowed here that we've established based on our standard. Okay, so our production volume variance, here it is. The total denominator hours versus our standard hours allowed, that difference times our standard fixed rate here. Now we have one other 
a variance here, and we are going to call that the idle capacity variance. And really, that's let's look at it in these terms. Those taking those total denominator hours that we have established here under a stack, a flexible budget and comparing it to the actual hours used here based on our actual results here. So that difference, denominator hours uh, in versus our actual hours used, that difference times the standard fixed rate here that we have for our fixed overhead. Okay, again, remember this DH here, that's a total budget of direct labor hours that we're b basing our fixed overhead cost on here, the DH here. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at these, uh, these variances in terms of a graph here. So on the graph here, along our x-axis or our lower axis here, this is where we're going to have our direct labor hours here. That's our allocation base, based on our allocation base here for a fixed uh, overhead costs here. So really got three different uh, amounts that we're going to be looking at. The standard hours allowed here based on our standard here, the actual hours used here that we have for the period, and then those total direct labor hours or there's denominator hours here. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at here in terms of our allocation basis. Then we got this green upward sloping line here that's going to be our applied standard and that's really taking the standard fixed rate here times those direct labor hours that we're using here for each of those cases here the standard hours allowed actual hours used and those total denominator hours okay so the other uh, line that we have here is that fixed overhead rate that we have and that's based on those total denominator hours that we have budgeted here based on our fixed overhead cost times the fixed uh, f the standard fixed overhead rate. So that's a standard amount here, or that's a constant amount here. That's the fixed overhead cost here. And it, does, it doesn't change with the hours that were direct labor hours. It's just constant right across here. And then there's an intersection point here between our applied standard based on our standard fixed rate here times those total direct labor hours and it intersects here with our uh, standard fixed rate we have here, just to make that point. And then along our y-axis over here, that's going to be our fixed overhead cost. And really that's taking those direct labor hours times either our actual fixed overhead cost on a per unit basis here or our standard fixed overhead cost. Okay, so let's look at what we're going to be looking at here for our different variances here. And maybe what we should start with is that spending variance, that fixed overhead spending variance. And that's really looking at our actual hours used here on our graph, moving it up to, um, in this case, it's based on those, our fixed cost, that constant fixed cost, we, where it intersects that point here, that blue line here, versus the actual fixed overhead rate that we have here. This is our actual costing line here. That's our actual fixed overhead rate that we have for the period times the actual hours used here, those direct labor hours for our, uh, our overhead cost here. And the reason this point is here up here is that our actual fixed rate here is different from the standard fixed rate. Standard fixed rate falls on that green line here. Our actual fixed rate for the period actually was above that here. So that difference between what we have here for our standard fixed rate, uh, our, our standard variable overhead, our fixed overhead cost, that constant amount, that difference between that and our actual cost to that point here, that those two points is our fixed overhead spending variance. And you can understand why it's a spending variance because you're looking at a constant amount here for your actual hours used for both your fixed cost, a fixed overhead rate here, and the actual fixed overhead cost. The standard fixed rate here based on the fixed overhead cost here and the standard fixed. It's the same. It's just that you're looking at the actual fixed rate is different from the standard fixed rate. So that's the spending variance. Okay, so now let's look at our, in. let's go up there and, well, let's go, we'll look at these when we get done with the graph here. We'll go back up to our chart and look at those different amounts. But 
Then the other thing we have to deal with is we're going to call it a plan production volume variance. It was that, vo that production volume variance that we looked at, and that was simply the difference between our total, our denominator hours, there's total direct labor hours, versus the standard hours allowed here. The standard hours allowed times the standard fixed rate. So our denominator hours are sitting over here on our axis, and our standard hours allowed are sitting over here. And then we just go up to our green line here for the standard hours allowed, move over here, and the cost, the cost here would be the standard fixed rate times the standard hours allowed. Because that's our line over here. Standard fixed rate and times the standard hours allowed here. That's our applied standard. And then the other thing is, is those denominator hours here. That was what we based our uh, fixed cost on, those total direct labor hours. So we move up here, and that's the intersection point between our applied standard and our standard fixed cost that we have, standard overall fixed cost that we have here. Okay, so moving over here, that would be our standard fixed rate times those total denominator hours. Okay, so that's our plan production volume variance. Difference between the standard fixed rate and those total denominator hours versus our standard fixed rate here times the standard hours allowed. That's that difference between here at blue, our constant fixed cost here, that blue line, and what we determined here for our standard hours allowed here. That's our uh, plan production volume variance. And it happens to be when it's below this blue line, or it's below our uh, standard fixed overall fixed overhead cost here, or when it's below that line, it's unfavorable because we underapplied it here. Now, if we move over past our inflection point here, where our standard fixed rate here times those the direct labor hours here is over what we've got our standard uh, our uh, overhead cost on, that. Anytime we've exceeded here, and we're looking at it based on our applied standard, when our applied standard here is greater than our constant fixed cost, that's going to be a favorable variance because we up over applied it here essentially for our production, plan production volume variance. Okay, just to make that point. Okay, so now we get down to our idle capacity variance, and this is really where we're looking at our plan production volume variance versus what we have here for our. Uh, overall fixed overhead cost here. And it's really the difference between our idle capacity variance, again, we have to look at it in this terms here. That was that actual hours used, go up here and intersect with our applied standard line here, and the denominator hours here, denominator hours here, that amount here. And essentially you're looking at the difference between your blue line, your Stand, your fixed cost here, that overall fixed cost, versus what you have for your applied standards, so just going over here. So standard fixed rate here times the actual hours used versus a standard fixed rate here times those total denominator hours. So that's your idle capacity uh, variance here. So you see, the planned production variance was the difference between your fixed, your fixed standard fixed rate here times the total denominator hours versus your actual hours used here. And then the idle capacity variance was just the difference between the standard fixed uh, overhead rate here times the denominator hours versus the actual hours used here. That was your idle capacity variance. Okay, now maybe we should go up to our table here just to make a look at the relationships so you understand how the table here, our, our formulas fit in. So our spending variance, you could see that here. Actual hours used, actual actual hours used times the actual fixed rate versus the standard fixed uh, rate here times the denominator hours. And that's what we have down here, spending variance. You can see it right there. Actual fixed rate times actual hours used versus your standard fixed rate times the total denominator hours. So that was your spending variance. Production volume variance was just the de de denominator hours here versus the actual hours used versus the standard fixed rate here. And there it is, our planned production volume variance. Standard fixed rate times the denominator hours versus standard fixed rate times the actual standard hours allowed here based on our standard. And then our idle capacity variance, you could see that DH, denominator hours versus the actual hours used here, that difference times the standard fixed rate. 
and we can go back down here and you just see it standard fixed rate times the denominator hours here versus standard fixed rate times the actual hours used this idle capacity variance here that it I'm showing in green here that's that small amount in green here okay and um, just one other thing here the slope of this line if I didn't mention it's based on it increases here at the standard fixed rate here okay so really what we were looking at here is trying to isolate our planned production volume variance that we have here blue line versus what we have for a standard hours loud we isolated that and then we looked at the idle capacity variance here the capacity that wasn't used here and it was that amount here so really that's what we're trying to get at here looking at our idle capacity variance versus our planned production volume variance and just to make a point here when we get past this inflection point here where our standard fixed our applied standard is greater than our uh, fixed amount here then we wouldn't have any idle capacity variance but until we get to that point here where we got our standard hours allowed versus our actual hours used here there's a difference then that's our idle capacity variance okay and then one last thing here just to go over our look at our reference key here uh, that AF here that was our actual fixed overhead rate SF in red was the standard fixed overhead rate AHU here was the actual hours used and what we're do is remember this uh, fixed overhead rate was based on direct labor hours in this case and then SHA here in blue is the standard hours allowed DH was the total budgeted direct labor hours oh there's denominator hours and really that those denominator hours fits into our uh, fixed overhead rate calculations here or, or overhead rate calculations here so this is what we're looking at uh, these rates here the actual versus the standard you're just taking your total fixed cost and dividing it by your total direct labor hours those DH or those total uh, budgeted direct labor hours of the denominator hours and the difference between the actual and the standard is to we would for our actual fixed rate we just take our total fixed cost here for the period and divide it by the total actual direct labor hours that we used that would be for our, our actual fixed overhead rate and in our standard fixed overhead rate would just be the difference between the total predetermined amount here of fixed cost that we determine on based on our standard divided by again the total predetermined direct labor hours here based on our standard okay We've went through everything here where we looked at our spending variance, our production volume variance, and then we worked that idle capacity variance in. Okay, so that'll end our discussion.